there. My name is Site Interpreter Kayla. I work for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources up here in Marquette State Park in Grafton. And welcome to your self-guided, socially distanced bald eagle tour. Unfortunately, with COVID, we can't have in-person bald eagle tours, so we're doing a virtual bald eagle tour. Here with me today is Scott Isseringhausen, and he's going to tell you guys a little bit about bald eagles and why this area has so many of them. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Hi, how's everybody doing today? For those of you who do not know me, my name is Scott Isringhausen. I work with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, actually for the Division of Fisheries. In saying that, I did start the Eagle Program here at Pear Marquette State Park approximately 30 years ago. Believe it or not, this is truly one of the very best places in the entire world to view our bald eagle in its natural habitat. The eagles primarily come here because of their favorite food. Their favorite food truly is fish. As the waters in the far north freezes, it pushes the eagles down into this area. They come from the far north. They primarily come from Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Canada. In saying that, fish is their favorite food. Their second favorite food comes from waterfowl. Ducks and geese are truly the second main source of food for our national bird. But we also think about this area. This area is so fabulous because of the two rivers actually meeting in here. Right in the town of Grafton, we have the Illinois and the Mississippi River, which meets. Also, we have these ferries that go back and forth across the rivers. They churn up the fish. A lot of times the fish are killed or stunned. A lot of times it's a really easy food or easy picking for our national bird. We're also on what we call the Mississippi Highway or Flyway for waterfowl. So a lot of ducks in the area as well. When it gets really, really cold and the rivers really tend to freeze up at the backsides of the lock and dams, we will always have open water. We have a couple of the locks and dams in this area as well, so there's always open water behind these dams as well. And also during this time when it gets cold, a lot of times the eagles turn into being a scavenger. They will eat road killed animals. They will eat uh, things that have been killed in, in many different manners, including our state animal of Illinois, the white-tailed deer. Even the raccoon is truly food for our national bird. Whenever bald eagles mate, they mate for life. They keep coming back to the same nest each year. They add a la new layer of limbs and twigs until eventually this nest can become absolutely huge. The largest nest I've ever been told about came from Vermillion, Ohio. This particular nest was over 2,000 pounds and it was 10 feet across and over 20 feet up and down. But this is one of the most amazing things to me about the bald eagles. I said they mate for life, but most eagles that we see around here are not nesting eagles. Most of the nesting is done in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Canada, especially for the eagles that we see in this area. But believe it or not, these eagles fly down here in the wintertime, primarily in the month of November and December. They will stay here until maybe the first week or 10 days in March, and they will fly back up north and get together with their mate each year. How do they know who their mate is, who, where their nest is? I find that to be truly, truly amazing. And also, when they make this journey south, they not necessarily stay together with their, their mate, like I just said. So in saying that, kind of like separate vacations. So kind of keep that in mind. I think that is the most amazing thing, truly, about our national bird. And we think about the nest. I said they become very large, and they do. But the inside of the nest would look real similar to what this nest right here does, although a lot larger. It would be lined with grasses and mosses and sometimes some, some leaves. The eagle eggs look white, an awful like a big chicken egg. They're three inches long, two inches round, and they are white in color. And like I said a while ago, it takes the eggs 35 days to hatch. But believe it or not, everyone, this truly is the number one enemy of our national bird. Now, it's not so much of the big bird right here, but what he, raccoons will do is they'll climb up into the nest. And a lot of times they will rob the nest. They will eat the eggs. They will eat the eaglets. All these things truly are food for our national bird. So keep that in mind. But now believe it or not, if mom or dad have to see what's going on, this raccoon truly become, can become table food for the bald eagles. Now in saying that, I mentioned their talons. Their talons that you see right here are razor, razor sharp. They're two, over 2,000 pounds per square inch. Will be like me taking a knife or nail and putting it in that rock fireplace that you see behind me here. When I first started working, it used to be called the Illinois Department of Conservation, now the Illinois Department of Natural Resources over 30 years ago. And at that time, 
the eagle was very, very rare. It was actually an endangered species. I grew up in the, this area, went to high school in Jerseyville, and in saying that, I never even knew there was eagles around here. But the, the number one reason for the sharp decline for the bald eagle was because of a pesticide. This pesticide is known as DDT. It was not directly killing the big eagles here, but what it was doing is it was greatly reducing the reproduction. Whenever the egg shells were laid, the egg shells are so thin because the high concentration of DDT, the eggs absolutely shatter or crush. So the DDT truly did horrible things for our national bird. The number two reason for death was from what we call lead shot poisoning. The hunter would go up and he would shoot the duck. The duck was weakened or crippled, and this is the duck or goose that this guy was going after. It's kind of like me. The easier he get his meal, the happier he was. And it doesn't take very much lead to actually kill this big, beautiful, bald eagle here. But the eagle started making a strong comeback. It went from threatened, or went from endangered, went to threatened, to now protected. If you or I got caught with a, an eagle feather, we could be fined and we could actually put in prison for, for actually having possession of, a, of an eagle feather. So again, the eagle's here to say, and it's something that we see more and more each winter. The bald eagle is our national bird. Believe it or not, the males and females look identical. The only major difference is, is size. A female eagle can weigh as much as 14 to 15 pounds, and a male eagle as much as eight to nine pounds. So quite a size difference between the male and female. What I like to tell everyone, it's kind of like people. She rules the roost, especially when it comes to birds of, of prey. Now, when an eagle has their wings out, they're very, very flat, and they have a wingspan between six and one half to seven feet. Some books will say as much as eight feet on the wingspan of a large female bald eagle. In saying that, their eyesight is also very special. They do not have one, but they have two different types of visions. First of all, they have what we call monocular vision, which means they can take one eye and focus on one object and take another eye and focus on another object. Or they can take like you and I, looking for a pair of binoculars, and we call this binocular type vision. It is said that an eel can see a fish as much as a half a mile away down the water, can see a rabbit run across the ground as much as two miles away. So again, their eyesight is truly very, very, very good. And if someone tells you a bird is stooping, that's a fancy name for a dive. When eagles dive, they dive at speeds exceed 100 miles per hour. Now when saying that, you can see that these birds look very big. This probably is a female bald eagle because it is pretty big. But, but believe it or not, they start out from an egg. The eggs are laid. It takes the eggs 35 days to hatch. And within 72 to 75 days, this bird looks real familiar to what this guy does right here. In saying that, if you see a baby eagle that's born, it's very, very small from a few ounces in size. And it, sometimes it actually doubles in weight. So they truly do grow at a very, very fast, fast speed. In saying that, you can see that this is a, an in, what we call an immature or a young bald eagle. Eagles do not actually get their white heads or their white tail feathers until they're between four and a half to five years old. The eyes, the beak right here have not changed to the bright colors that you see right here. In saying that, this typically happens between two to two and a half to maybe as much as, as three years in age. The eagle is a very long-lived bird. In the wild, he's been known to live to be at least as old as 40. In captivity, as much as 50 years, with a reproductive life of 25 to 30 years. So again, the bald eagle is a very, very long-lived bird. Every once in a while, in one of our bald eagle tours, we will actually see a golden eagle. Golden eagles are not typically found around here. They are found out in the western parts of the United States, Arizona, Montana, Nevada, New Mexico, Wyoming. That's where this huge, round-headed golden eagle truly is found. But in saying that, if the bald eagle and golden eagle were both found around here in large numbers, there would not be much competition for food because the golden eagle is primarily a mammal's eater. It's jackrabbits, it's cats, it's rats, anything that runs across the ground, this is what this huge, round-headed golden eagle truly eats, whereas the bald eagle's favorite food, as I mentioned earlier, truly is fish. Now, the bald eagle, he nests in the tops of the trees. A lot of times, the golden eagle will choose rocky ledges. So, quite a, quite a difference between the golden eagle and the bald eagle as far as their nesting habits. But if you happen to see an immature golden eagle, or an immature bald eagle and a golden eagle, he may not be able to tell the difference. And if you happen to see a, a big golden brown bird flying above the rivers in the wintertime, you can pretty much assume that it's not a 
golden eagle, but it truly is our national bird, the bald eagle. Believe it or not, everyone, this truly is the second largest wintering population of bald eagles in the lower 48 states. The number one area is in Alaska, an area called the Chilkat Valley in Alaska. They have more eagles than what we do year round. The number one area, most winters, is way out west of the states of Northern California and Southern Oregon, an area called the Klamath Valley. But believe it or not, folks, this truly is the second largest wintering population for bald eagles in the lower 48 states in the wintertime. And I think everyone should feel very, very privileged and very, very special for having our national bird in these very large numbers right here in most of your people's, most everyone's backyards. And the eagles that fly out to the western part of the United States are primarily coming from Alaska and they follow the coastline down. The eagles that we're seeing here are primarily from Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Canada. And they follow the Illinois and the Mississippi rivers down into this area or this vicinity. So just think about it. We truly are very, very fortunate. And if anybody has any questions about the Bald Eagle program or about eagles in general, please call 618-786-3323. Thank you very much, everyone.